I, I, I see we have a recording in progress. Okay, got it. Okay, anyway, um, also, we're going to keep people muted throughout the program because it's going to be, you know, with approximately 200 people on this call um, or on the Zoom meeting, it, it, it could get a little uh, disruptive otherwise. We're going to be putting this, um, uploading this event to YouTube also. So if you know of anybody who wasn't able to attend today or they didn't register, please encourage them to watch. Uh, you know, we owe our clients the most up-to-date perspectives on um, economics and how it relates to real estate. And Dr. Yoon always has a good perspective. I'm going to put a little plug here for GMAR in that a lot of people may not realize we are one of the only associations in the country and certainly the only one in Michigan that is putting on a program like this. Um, to get Dr. Yoon to do a private program for our association is really quite an honor, but it is also a statement about what GMAR is in that we have that kind of respect nationally that we are offered these opportunities. There's also, I'm gonna give you a couple save the dates that are coming up this month. Um, if you would like to um, jot these down or you can also, there's reminders for some of these, I think all of them on RealComp when you sign in. The first one is we're hosting um, a two-part at home with diversity. Um, the first program is on the 13th of this month. It offers you six standard um, Con Ed credits, two of which are legal. Um, and this will be the first part on the 13th from 9 to 1230. And that is being um, done by our own James Crisbrook. On April 14th, um, Scott Galloway, an attorney, one of our affiliates, and Julie McKee from Parks Title is doing a program um, called A Legal Perspective. It's on the 14th from 9 to 12. These are all Zoom classes, by the way. And so uh, really very, very um, achievable to log into those, but make sure to register. And then on the 19th, there is another legal program called That's Legal, isn't it? So it's going to have an awful lot of uh, topics. Um, there's always a lot of confusion on, on what we can and cannot do. That is from 1 to 3 p.m on the 19th, and that's two legal credits. So that is the plug for um, everything that GMAR is doing um, this month. Does anybody have any questions or comments before Dr. Yoon comes on regarding some of these programs we're doing? I can't see anybody, Hannah. Mary? Yeah. It's Dennis here. I was going to ask Dennis. How are you doing? I'm I good. Was, good. I was going to ask you about the April 20th uh, home ownership of many colors uh, thing. That's something that's also on our schedule, right? For, for April? You know what? Um, I was, is that also being posted on a uh, real comp? Yeah. It might be, but I did see it on the. Uh, events page of gmaronline.com and I just registered for it. So I just wanted well, to throw that out there. Dennis, what, thank you. Um, I was just saying to Hannah and Vicki, it's, there's so many things going on as, as you well know in April, including we're doing the uh, uh, meetings with all the legislative people and all that. So why don't you um, tell this esteemed group um, what you just registered for what what was the time on the 20th it's uh it's at uh, from 10 a.m to 1 p.m and it's going to be at the Tro in troy at the management center michigan state i think it's michigan state university management yeah, this, center yeah this is our fair housing program for april okay so yes 
and thank you for thank you i it's i had forgotten that's what they're what they're calling it but no so everybody april is fair housing month and um yes this is an incredible program um that our uh, diversity and inclusion committee um has put on um in the past and it, it, it's this is also has the advantage i don't know dennis did you register for it to be in person because that, yes yeah I, I i i did register for in person but it is offering the option terry for a zoom exactly so, yeah. exactly and i see here that hannah has also put up some more save the dates so um, i appreciate that so yes the fair housing event which is called being called protecting the many colors of home ownership is really going to be incredible anybody who attended their program last year i thought it was um, arguably the best fair housing program I had ever seen. Um, the top producers panel, YPN, is uh, hosting June 15th, um, right on the heels of their incredibly successful fouling event. Um, so YPN um, always comes up with great programs. The GMAR Summer in the Park, 11 to 6. Look, look for a lot of information coming up on that. That's July 16th. Um, that is at a park in Madison Heights, I think, Kiana. Are you on? Yes, that's correct. It's Madison Heights Civic Center. Yes, I, I can't wait for that. Um, I'm not doing a dunk tank, though. Just I'm putting that out right now. I, I didn't know. even ask. Don't worry. Don't worry. We have I know, a lot of fun other activities we can do. I know James, <laughs> a, a former president, had suggested that might be a good idea. And I'm just, I'm saying here right now that that's not going to happen. Um, the, You're uh, off the so, hook. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Well, a couple of things that you don't, or, or one thing you don't have here, I won't go into a lot of details. There's going to be a RPAC event um, on July 18th that details coming up on that um, the summer mingle in august and back by popular demand the gmar golf outing it's going to be um, really quite something um, it, we have not done a golf outing in a couple of years so anyway yet i took this chance while i had a captive audience to promote some of the events um, that gmar is doing this summer. I'm so glad we're back in person. Let me know, Hannah, um, when Dr. Yoon is, is waiting and I'll, I'll, I'll do the introduction. I, I do on. see him. Yep, I he is on. on. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> he came in early, thankfully. So he oh got my to hear gosh. all the awesome things we're doing with Gmar. <laughs> okay. Well, this is great then. I'm just going to uh, hop right on to it then. First of all, as I mentioned, anyone who has ever had the opportunity to hear or see Dr. Yoon in the past um, know what a treat this is. Most of the time, uh, really, you need to be at a NAR event to um, have his wisdom imparted upon all of us. So I am thrilled to introduce Dr. Lauren Shun as our special speaker today. Dr. Yoon is the Chief Economist and Senior Vice President of Research at the National Association of Realtors. And he regularly provides commentary on the real estate market for over 1.5 million realtors. Um, he has appeared as a guest on C-SPAN, uh, Washington Journal is a regular columnist on the Forbes website. Nobody knows more about the real estate and economic uh, trends than Dr. Yoon. We are so happy to have him. Thank you, Dr. Yoon, and you have the floor. Uh, thank you, uh, President Terry, uh, for uh, inviting me to uh share some of my thoughts about the market uh, developments and what we can anticipate in 2022. Uh, certainly the mortgage rate increases, it's been quite sharp, uh, sudden, 
uh, rather than the gradual, we have seen that mortgage rate, which was just 3% in December of last year, 3%, then suddenly moving up, going past 4%, now knocking on the door for 5% mortgage rate. These are dramatic moves in mortgage rates. Thank you, President Terry, also for mentioning about all the other activity that the GMAR is doing. We always appreciate what the local association presidents, including Fair Housing, which is this month. Uh, as an Asian American, uh, the Asian population really did not grow uh, since uh, until about 1970s onwards. But if one thinks about it, some of the major Chinatown where there were Asian population well uh, in America many years ago, the reason for Chinatown in New York City or San Francisco was because Asians could not live anywhere else. They could only live in certain locality, Chinatown. So we thank Dr. Martin Luther King for you know, pushing the fair housing issue and certainly for all Americans, we should have right to live where we want to live. Uh, so great uh, in terms of the fair housing month uh, part. But let's go to the issue of the economy and what we can anticipate. So let me put a PowerPoint slide onto the screen and go from there. So. All right, here we are. So let's first start with this dramatic upturn in mortgage rates. The blue line is the mortgage rates, uh, and it's essentially now the uh, you know one of the highest uh, mortgage rate uh, in quite some time. Uh, the red line is what the Federal Reserve in Washington directly controls. When you hear in the evening news about Federal Reserve raise interest rates. So you think that mortgage rate increased during that time of announcement? And the answer is no. Mortgage rates are not determined by the Federal Reserve. It's determined by many, many factors, how the bond market investors are buying, selling um, along with that. So what you see on this chart is that Fed has raised their interest rate one time this year the red line. So it was at absolute low point and they decided to raise interest rate only one round this year. But look how far the mortgage rate has jumped up. Dramatic. So what this is telling is that the market is anticipating that the Federal Reserve will be raising interest rate multiple rounds later this year. And mortgage rate is trying to price that information in already. So, if we look at the past, other years, we see the red line goes up and down. So this is what Washington Federal Reserve is controlling, up and down. But note how the blue line, which is important for you and your buyers, do not move in proportion, generally moves in the same direction, but not in proportion of one-to-one -one ratio. And in fact, there are at times, for example, 2004, if you look on the screen, 2004, Federal Reserve increased interest rate multiple rounds, but the mortgage rate barely budged. So there's always different reaction, different cycle. And how I interpret the latest information is that inflation is high. Federal Reserve is announcing that they will do multiple rounds of rate increase and mortgage rate has responded in anticipation of many, many rate increases already. Therefore, mortgage rate changes from this point onward for the remainder of the year could be very minor, very minimal change. I mean, of course I could be wrong. We could still see some surprises, but I think most of the increase in mortgage rates have already occurred. So if your buyer somehow can still qualify for mortgage at 5%. I think they can still qualify for mortgage for the remainder of the year because I don't really see mortgage rate changing that much because it's already priced in about what the Fed will be doing. This is the chart on the different mortgage products. The blue line is the same 30 year fixed rate mortgage. The green is the 15 year rate mortgage course, because of the shorter time span, the monthly mortgage payment is much more higher, uh, but it you know, pays off the mortgage co uh, quicker and interest rate tends to be lower. The red line is 
five-year arm. So someone can take out this mortgage and get a lower interest rate. And it may be some opportunity for some people. It's not a subprime lending. And thank goodness, we don't wanna have those risky mortgages. But it is a mortgage for say a young couple, highly educated, maybe one is going to go to law school, one recently graduated from medical school. So their income potential is huge. But they also have large student debt uh, and maybe they actually wants to get that adjustable rate mortgage, knowing that they have a huge income potential in the future, but right now they can get mortgage rate at a little lower rate. So 30 year rate rising, all interest rate rising, but people who are looking for slight, in, uh, you know, slightly lower mortgage rate, at least that uh, the five year arm is providing that option. But please keep in mind about the risk potential. For five years, mortgage payment do not change for five years. But after five years, it could be higher. It could even be lower depending on economic circumstance, but it will change after five years. Let's do a mortgage calculator number crunching. We all have the mortgage calculator. Easy to do, but let's do it together. On a $400,000 loan, now, this would be somewhat on the high end market, but you know, Oakland County has uh, a very expensive home. And I remember one realtor from Oakland County used to tell me that Oakland County was the wealthiest county in America for many, many years. You had all this Detroit auto producers, executive living in or uh, Oakland County. So Oakland County used to be one of the wealthiest uh, with a, you know, fancy mansions and such. So maybe 400,000, uh, mortgage is very reasonable uh, in that uh, county. But let's do some number crunching. At 3%, which was as December and throughout last year, mortgage payment, you see $1,686. Then you punch in 4% and you get different number. Today, mortgage rates are touching 5%. So for the same amount of mortgage, look how it is changing. 6%. I don't think so. I think most of the rate increase have already occurred, but we still need to be prepared for some worst case scenario. And you see the number. So for the same house, same mortgage, this is what's happening from changes in mortgage rate, which is the reason we always see in the past data that when the interest rate rise meaningfully, eventually home sales decline because people are simply priced out not the initial months. In the initial months of rate increase, there could be more intense buying interest. Some of the buyers may think this is their last chance to get in. So they put extra efforts, uh, you know, trying to come up with extra down payment, trying to waive home inspection, trying to put last effort before interest rate rise further. So in the early weeks of rising mortgage rate, the buying intensity actually is stronger. But eventually, after three months, six months, home sales begin to come down because people are simply priced out. That 10% is not a possibility, but I just put it there. But you said the numbers, wow, yeah, essentially mortgage payment essentially doubles. Uh, but I remember when I bought my first home, mortgage rates were 8%. When my parents purchased their home, mortgage rates were 15%. Somebody who buy at high interest rate, of course, mortgage payment is high. But if there's one, one silver lining is that they can always refinance when the mortgage rate declines because we know mortgage rate goes up and it goes down. So at least even people who are locked in at high interest rate, they always have the opportunity to refinance into lower one at a later time because mortgage rate goes up and down. Here's another scenario because what this shows is that home prices have risen strongly a home that was required $400,000 mortgage one year ago, 12 months ago. But that price of that home is much higher now. As we know, market has been quite strong. So now the person needs to take out a larger loan for the same house. So today, according to Freddie Mac, mortgage rate is at 4.7%. So if one looks at the monthly payment, you see that compared to 12 months ago, and now, now going from 1686 to 2489, that is a 48% jump. 
talk about increase in cost of living. You go to grocery store and you are upset, irritated. You go to gas station and you are angry. But this increase in the mortgage payment, I mean, for the first time buyer, this is a price shocker uh, in terms of how much they have to pay uh, just by having purchasing now versus 12 months ago. 12 months ago, home prices were cheaper and also mortgage rates were much lower. So what's causing this higher mortgage rates? Well, it's because inflation. Inflation rate is rising. And one of the tasks of the Federal Reserve is to contain inflation. So as Federal Reserve is trying to contain inflation, what is driving the overall inflation? There are many, many factors. The one big item is oil prices, sky high currently. I thought that it would be instructive to look at this oil price chart from long, long time ago from 1970. In 1970, a barrel of oil was $3. Not a gallon, a barrel was $3. Then there was a war in Israel, an OPEC form, and they essentially said, we don't wanna send oil to America, we don't wanna send oil to uh, Europe. And consequently, that OPEC oil embargo boosted oil price from $3 per barrel to $40. So if you are oil producers, you were smiling big. Saudi Arabia was raking it in. Venezuela was raking it in. Fictional television character J.R. Ewing was smiling big in Dallas because oil prices were so high. And also Soviet Union under communist economy, which is inefficient, but they could hide their inefficiency because of high oil revenue. Then by mid 1980s, I put that little red circle that you see, oil prices collapsed because there was a more oil production in Texas, Alaska, uh, the North Sea near Britain, uh, and also the OPEC countries were cheating on each other to say, okay, I'm gonna still sell oil, produce more. Uh, and consequently oil prices declined. So what happened? Well, in Texas, state of Texas, there was a lot of foreclosures, home foreclosures, uh, because oil prices uh, collapsed. Uh, Soviet Union soon collapsed. Berlin Wall fell down. This is how important oil was to the Soviet Union at that time. The whole country collapsed. Since then, oil prices went up and down. Currently, we know of the very sad situation occurring in Ukraine sanctions on Russia and all that part. But Russia is essentially saying currently, oh, we cannot sell oil to America, no problem. Germany is still buying because if they don't buy our oil, their factory has to shut down and they cannot produce Mercedes. So Germany will still buy, that's fine. China will buy, that's fine. India will buy our oil. So Russia currently is still getting a lot of revenues because oil prices are high even if they have to sell it at a discount. So in a sense, the finance situation in Russia is not being greatly damaged as long as oil prices are very high. If we look at America, oil drilling activity, I put this in context because first, realtors, gasoline prices are very important. Realtors drive more frequently than the rest of the population. So when the gas prices rise, realtors get hurt more. Furthermore, this drilling activity means that how do we contain inflation? What will the Federal Reserve do? Uh, maybe they don't have to be so aggressive in raising interest rate, which will calm the mortgage rates down. So let's see what's the drilling activity in America. That red line that you see in the middle, that is the COVID arrival into America. March, 2020. So before the COVID arrival, you see some activity regarding durable goods orders and shipments of drilling equipment. Then after COVID, in the initial months of the COVID, economic uncertainty, oil prices were low, so there was very little drilling, which makes sense. But now that the oil prices are so high, we should be drilling more. 
This is the profit incentive. Yet America is not drilling so much, which means that oil prices will continue to be high, inflation rate will be high, and also that means uh, the Federal Reserve has to aggressively raise interest rate, hurting your consumers in terms of the mortgage rates, all at the same time, Putin is able to rake in money because oil prices remain high. So if we were able to drill more, then oil prices will come down. Certainly gasoline prices will be lower, lower inflation, lower mortgage rates, and Putin will be hurt. Uh, but that's not what's happening uh, currently uh, in America uh, because uh, we are not drilling all that much. I'm not in Washington DC office yet. Right now, that today I'm on a business travel uh, in for a, another NAR event, but NAR staff is very proud of Washington DC NAR building because it was the first green designated building in Washington DC when it was constructed 15 years ago. First green designated building. We are proud of that. We should care about climate change, green energy, you know, clean energy, all moving in the right direction. But we also have to recognize that transition from oil to green energy, it's gonna take multiple years time. We don't have enough solar panels. We don't have enough windmills. Uh, and certainly Detroit, you know, the economy where you are trying to make up more fuel efficient autos, but that makes the cars more expensive. All that has to be balanced out. But in today's current situation, right now, there's not enough drilling in America, which means high oil prices, high gasoline prices uh, situation. Now, High oil prices is contributing to the broader consumer price inflation, which is the red line. 7.9% increase, highest in 40 years. If you are age under 40, you have never seen anything like this. I remember the 1970s when the gasoline prices, again, OPEC oil embargo. And some of you may recall this strange phenomenon. They said, if your license tag had an even number, you cannot pump gas today. You have to wait until Friday before you can pump gas. Only people with odd number on the license tag can do it today. So they have some kind of strange situation, long line at the gas station, all that. Uh, today, we don't have those strange stuff. Only thing we have is high gasoline prices at the pump, uh, which is you know, quite maddening uh, in terms of you know, the, the total final bill. But, High oil prices, high food prices, and many others is contributing to high inflation, the red line. The blue line is the wage growth. Wage growth is also one of the strongest ever, but all this wage growth that you are getting is just being wiped away by higher inflation. So inflation is running even faster than people's wage growth. If there's one silver lining about inflation, it is related to real estate because Inflation is not fun, but this is something you need to be very mindful as you talk to clients or people who are sitting on the sidelines. Looks like home real estate is a very good hedge against inflation. Some people are saying, what do I do in inflation? Do I buy gold, silver, what do I do? You can say, buy real estate because it has shown to be a good hedge. Look at the 1970s. Average consumer price inflation was 7.1% per year. Some years a little higher, other years lower, but averaging 7.1% high inflation. What did home prices do? Better, 9.9%. 1980s, because inflation was running high, Federal Reserve dramatically raised interest rates. Mortgage rate touching 18% in one year, 18%. So what do you think happened to home sales? Home sales just plunge. Your clients disappear. You cannot make the sales. So home sales really plunge. And you say, well, if people are not buying home, surely home prices would have plunged. And you see on the 1980s bar, 5.5% growth in home prices, consumer prices 5.6%. So you say, how in the world can home prices rise when people are not buying home? And the answer is, when the consumer prices were rising, the rents were rising along with it. So as a real estate investor, you are thinking, what do I invest? Stocks, bonds, gold, what do I invest? And they are seeing high rent growth, 
and people buy real estate. So it was the rent growth that provided support for home prices. And surely you are seeing the rent growth currently in the Detroit, greater Detroit market today. 1990s, different decades, you see similar home prices either match or did better than consumer price inflation. So someone who is angry about inflation, at least you can mention one way to hedge against inflation is to own real estate because it generally holds value or at least even outpace the inflation. Let's now turn to the job market. This is the total number of people who have jobs in America. W-2 statements. I know realtors, you are independent contractors, you don't have W-2, but these are only W-2 payroll uh, checks. So right before COVID, you see the three months of job numbers. Then March 2020 lockdown, or at least late March, we had a lockdown. And job numbers plunged, 20 million job losses. But steadily with the reopening in the economy, job creation, job creation, we are almost back to normal. We are shy by 2 million jobs, another 2 million jobs, and we will be back up to pre-COVID days, not back to normal yet. Let's look at the variation. Michigan, I think every children in America will be able to identify Michigan because people love that winter mitten uh, shape. Um, and you see the Michigan as being down minus 2.4. So what does minus 2.4 mean? It means in Michigan, there are 2.4% fewer jobs now compared to pre-COVID days. Wisconsin, minus 1.9, Minnesota, minus 3.4, and some of the big negative, like New York, minus 3.9. Then you have orange color states. What are orange color states? They actually have more jobs now compared to pre-COVID days. Indiana has more jobs. Big, strong economy. Utah and Idaho, 5% more jobs now than before. The worst performing state is Hawaii. Minus 8.9 because international travel, tourism was not there. And also they had a, quite a strict COVID uh, policy where uh, for most of the time, you, know, you travel to Hawaii and you could not leave your room, hotel room for five days. And people said, no, I'm not going to Hawaii if that's the case. What's the fun in being stuck in a hotel room? So the employment was really sharply curtailed uh, in Hawaii. But you talk to realtors in Hawaii, how is the real estate doing? And they said it's booming. And why is the real estate booming in Hawaii? Well, Mark Zuckerberg, the Facebook boss, he's surfing out in Hawaii because he essentially said, work from anywhere. Why go to San Francisco? So many companies are providing that worker flexibility to work from anywhere. So even though the job market may be bad in Hawaii, real estate is booming. But when it shows some variation across the country, Michigan down 2.4%, I think it's on the cusp, maybe two, three more months and Michigan should be turning positive. Let's look at the total job, again, W-2 jobs, uh, stuff, payment job, payroll employment in the greater Detroit area market. Detroit actually had a recession before the financial crisis because of the auto industry restructuring. So I put that red line as a designation point for year 2000. So from year 2000 all over to 2010, continuous job losses, 10 years of depressing situation. I mean, you know about it. You saw uh, what was happening uh, in the job market condition in your area. Then from the low point in 2010, jobs started to recover. So this increase in job led to housing demand formation and you had some increase in business. Then COVID hit and you see a sharp downturn. You are trying to recover from that, almost there, not yet. Here's a nearby market in Lansing. Just a slight variation is that Lansing in few times is above the red line, meaning it's above the year 2000. So let me go back to Detroit, greater Detroit area. So Detroit has been consistently under the red line because of auto industry restructuring, at least Lansing because of the state capital, maybe a little more buffer uh, protection. 
But compare this to the following. Nashville, Tennessee has zero state income tax and people have been moving into Tennessee. So job market in Tennessee is just booming. And if you're wondering why the real estate story is just amazing and out in Nashville in terms of home sales, home prices, well, this is the condition. I mean, you are seeing improvement in your area because you are seeing job growth. So that's certainly you know, moving in the right direction. But I just want to emphasize how important jobs are for long-term dynamics regarding the uh, home prices and housing demand over a long time. Interesting part of the current labor market is that we have a massive labor shortage. Help one sign just about everywhere. You walk the street and you see help one sign at one restaurant, then help one sign at a hotel, help one sign at a construction site, because we need more home building and there's help one sign at construction. Blue line is help one sign. Red line is people who are unemployed and looking for jobs. In the early months of COVID, huge unemployed, not enough job. But today we are in a situation where statistically, one unemployed person could find two jobs. Now the reality is that job matching is difficult. Somebody who used to be an executive for General Motors lost the job, well, he's not gonna work at a restaurant. He's looking for the next similar type of job. So he's not gonna match up. It's currently, uh, at least statistically, for each unemployed person, there's two job openings. Uh, it's a very tight labor market. One area where there is no labor shortage is NAR membership, something that you should be very mindful of. We have no control over this. You, know, you take your courses, you go through the licensing processing uh, part. I like the fact that people have this entrepreneurial spirit can-do attitude, that's all good. But we also have to recognize that it is a fiercely competitive market out there. If there is a fresh realtor coming onto the market and their first client is their uncle, that means their uncle is no longer available to other realtors. It is fiercely competitive marketplace out there. Our data shows consistently that 20% of realtors do very well, six-figure commission income. But about 30% of our members struggle, barely making about 20,000 a year. So it is purely silly competitive. I wish you best in the, you know, this uh, competitive environment, uh, but I just want to highlight that just because housing market has been doing well does not mean it's an easy business. It is more competition out in the marketplace to get that listing, trying to get that transaction done. Now let's look at the housing market why people are coming into real estate. Because home sales increased to the highest point in 15 years, recently completed the year. So when I look at the data in say Oakland County, the Detroit city, or, or I say Detroit Board of Realtors, uh, look at the Macomb County, uh, all the sales last year were slightly higher compared to the year before. And 2020 was a good year. You know, it was a good year. So, Rising home sales has been good in terms of you know, transaction opportunity, even though more people are joining to become realtors. If we look at the median price, this is the US median price. When we had a foreclosure crisis back in 2008, home prices really plunged. People were upside down, underwater situation. Some new realtors may not understand what a short sale was, or foreclosure sales, but those were happening back then. But you see how the prices have steadily risen and now it is reaching all time high. Warren Buffett's famous maxim, when everyone is scared, strike. And back in 2010 period, foreclosure crisis, everyone was scared. And if you had the financial resources, if you struck at that time, you would have made huge amount of money because of the price increases since that time. Let's look at the price appreciation in the greater Detroit metro area, how prices have increased. So you see the last data points, 15% price appreciation in the recent times 
These are one of the strongest ever in the Detroit metro market. So prior to COVID, home prices were rising about 5% a year, then suddenly reaching up to 15% price increase. The middle of the chart is that foreclosure crisis when the prices actually decline, people going underwater, uh, short sales and foreclosure situation. But now uh, you are reaching essentially all time high in terms of prices uh, with recent price appreciation being exceptionally strong. You cannot see the numbers, but you will have this PowerPoint to peruse or you can go to the Michigan Realtors website and you can peruse a little more but I look at the information to see what's happening latest. Uh, and what's happening is that January, February, March home sales are a little lighter compared to what happened last year for the same time period. It's partly due to lack of inventory and partly due to rising mortgage rates. But if you look at the price chart, prices are still rising. So overall price condition is still rising because you know you will take time to alleviate this housing shortage. Housing shortage still would be with us for um, some time. I think the worst in housing shortage is coming to an end, uh, but this data you can peruse at your leisure uh, because one of the things that the ordinary clients expect of their realtors is local market knowledge. They want people who are uh, sharp in the local market knowledge, and the second important factor that clients look for in realtors is, can I trust my realtor? So if they trust you and they feel happy, but they also want you to have that local market knowledge. So mortgage rates are rising, home sales are coming down a bit, but then we have this different story. All cash transactions remain quite elevated. Maybe people are tired of the multiple offers, Definition of multiple offers, as we know, just means that there's only one winner and multiple losers. You did all the work, contract, you submitted the contract and you come up empty. You didn't get selected. You have to start the process all over again. So all that effort and work hours you put in, you are coming up empty because of multiple offers. Multiple offers has also driven some people to say, come up with cash, drain down your retirement savings, or maybe borrow some money from family members, somehow come up with cash. So right now cash deals are elevated. Uh, interestingly, so in the cash, they don't care about mortgage rates. They are saying, oh, I have cash, mortgage rate means nothing to me. So the intensity of cash deals still out there. Another interesting part is, number of homes that goes under contract within 30 days. It, before COVID, it was about 40% of the homes that goes under contract within 30 days before COVID. Then once the, we had the lockdown and the lifting of the lockdown, people said, I wanna work from home, I need a larger size home, low interest rate. So the uh, homes sold very fast, about 70% of the homes closed, I mean, contract signing within 30 days but now it is about 80%. So market is still very fast, very fast moving market. Demand is there, not enough inventory. Demand will slowly cut, be reduced from rising interest rate in the later months, but it's not being felt at the moment yet. Inventory level, as we know, we need more. It's touching historic low levels. We need more inventory everywhere, everywhere across the country. But I think we are ready to turn higher later this year. My best guess is that late summer. And when I say turn higher, what it means is that when you look at the inventory count in August of this year, you will say, oh, we have actually more homes listed on market compared to August of last year. It does not mean that we don't have this housing shortage. It means that worse in housing shortage is coming to an end and we need consistent increase in inventory choices. Now give little consumer more choices to choose from uh, and, and less incidents of multiple offers so that your work efforts actually turn into results. So inventory will turn higher. Why do I say that? Because the builders are building more and they wanna consistently build more. You see that home building activity has been subdued for multiple years. Now moving in the right direction, I want that blue bar to eventually touch the red line. 
The red line is what America needs. And in fact, you may say for a few years, we should be above that red line just to compensate for underproduction in the prior years. So housing shortage we have because builders have been underproducing, but eventually I think we will get more inventory because builders are ramping up production. Uh, multifamily housing starts, which is primarily apartments. We know that apartment rents are rising fast and some of the Wall Street investors are saying, let's build more apartments. So that is also happening. This is a very interesting data from the recent survey of consumers by the New York Federal Reserve. This data is from February, when the mortgage rate already increased up to 4%. Remember last year, mortgage rate 3%. February, mortgage rates were 4% and they took survey. Today's mortgage rate is 5%, by the way. <laughs> so, so, you know, but still, you know, higher mortgage rates. So that's consumers. Given you have higher mortgage rates and all these other considerations, what do you think will happen to home prices? What is consumers' expectation? And they think home prices will rise about 5.1% this year. Then after that, they think prices will rise only 2% a year. Hmm, only very little increase. But what about rent? Consumers believe rents will be rising even faster than home prices. Again, this is just the prediction among consumers, their mindset. Then the key question, considering the mortgage rate is a little higher, is buying a home a good financial investment or bad financial investment? And you can see by large margin, American consumers still believe buying a home is a very good investment. So that is the mindset of average consumer out there as you interact with them. So the inventory level is still low. I think it's gonna turn a little higher. Some first time buyers will be priced out, but if they can widen their geographic search area, so rather than focusing on one neighborhood, widen their search, especially people who can work from home. They don't have to commute every single day. Maybe the next county offers better affordability. So my final summation of all this factor is that 2020 and 2021, the COVID period flipped our life upside down, but one sector that did very well was real estate. And you see in 2020, home sales increased, 2021, home sales increased, prices increased even more stronger. So dollar volume revenue increased strongly. That is drawing more realtors to the profession, very competitive. But in 2022, because of higher mortgage rates, I think the sales will come down about 6%. Prices, I think, will still rise. Then in 2023, hopefully, inflation comes down and Federal Reserve does not have to raise interest rate anymore. Uh, and if that's the case, uh, then uh, we have the job creation adding to the housing demand. So thank you very much for listening. And again, I want to thank President Terry for providing me with the opportunity to share some of my thoughts. So thank you. Dr. Yoon, thank you. Um, there, there was a question, I think, um, wanting a little more clarification on the fact that in Michigan, um, we have 2.4% less filled jobs. But that is related to the fact that it's not a good match correct it's not we certainly have the job opportunities it's just that the people are not going into those jobs because maybe it's a demotion or not a good fit yeah, yeah, yeah. partly of that and then our soul you know one looks at our so which states are sort of down versus which states are up uh, is related to some of the lockdown policy in the areas where they had a more stricter lockdown it takes a little longer for the economy to recover. Uh, and Michigan has been one of the states that has been more strict on the lockdown, um, you know, like New York and Hawaii, uh, in areas where they had a less, uh, they did not really have a lockdown that much, then you know, they had a faster chance of jobs recovery. Michigan was one of those lockdown states, that's for sure. Um, there's another question. Are most of these forecasts um, an average of what other economists are saying, or is this more NAR data? Uh, so I think in like the Goldman Sachs at the early part of the year, 
uh, they thought the home prices would rise 20% this year. And I just think no way possible that's possible. Uh, I think the consensus among various economists, uh, price increases, I think they're looking at maybe seven, eight percent. So, so our price forecast is, uh, especially in light of much higher mortgage rates, I think it will be much calmer uh, price increases this year. So your home sellers, they should not be greedy. If they misprice home, they think it's going to be easy sell. You know, they're going to have a long, many days on the market and people will say, oh, something is definitely wrong with that home. And you don't want to have that uh, image of that. So they need to price the home correctly. Well, thank you. I think we're going to show the YouTube with you if we have a difficult seller <laughs> from, from your mouth to God's ear, so to speak. But anyway, no, that's that's absolutely fantastic. Um, there's another question. Um, is there um, concern that uh, the uh, issue with Russia and the Ukraine will affect uh, real estate outside of the inflation aspect? Um, so just in terms of the, that it could cause slower economic activity. I mean, Germany, their finance minister said because of the uh, war in Ukraine, they have notched down their economic forecast. Uh, I think they were looking at about 3% growth, but now they think it's going to be only 1% growth. So what that means is that when other countries' economy slows down, they will buy less of American products. So it also slows down American uh, economy, which means that uh, the job creation could be more sluggish rather than robust uh, because of the war uh, in Ukraine. Thank you. There was also a comment, just it's interesting. Apparently in Livingston County, uh, prices year to date have been up 12%. So obviously there's different pockets. Yeah, yes. That, that, that make up the average. Well, Dr. Yoon, thank you. Thank you so much. I know several of us are going to be seeing you again in in uh, the mid year meetings. Cannot wait. Um, there, there was a question about some of the charts. Hannah, will all of Dr. Yoon's charts be available? Yes, and I will send out the YouTube link to everybody that was on this call as well, just so Fantastic. they have quick access to it. Really, Dr. Yoon, you give us so much credibility when we're talking to our clients and share this information and other realtors too. Thank you so much, everybody. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Terry. And I hope to see you in DC. Uh, in you will, various, you will. Meeting with uh, members of Congress, trying to do the work for all the representing the realtors uh, in the GMAR area. So uh, again, thank you, everyone. Yes. and. And for everybody who attended the program, thank you. I think we benefited so much. Um, I, the comments are just almost predominantly thanking you, Dr. Yoon, in the chat. So everybody have a wonderful day. See you at some of these coming uh, upcoming GMAR events. Take care.